Hey gamers, welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today I'm going to be ranking every single class that I took in my sophomore year here at Stanford University. So I've actually already done the same type of video for my freshman year classes, but that video was like two years ago. So I figured it's about time for me to rank my sophomore year classes. So today I am here in tiermaker.com and I have a tier list with all the different classes that I took in my sophomore year of college. And honestly, I haven't thought about a lot of these classes since I took them back in sophomore year, which was two years ago at this point, if you can believe it. So I'm very curious to see how these classes stand to the test of time and how fondly I look back on them. So in terms of ranking these, I'm gonna be considering a number of factors, mostly based on how much I enjoyed the classes, how difficult the classes were, and how much trauma those classes gave me. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so I think it would make most sense for me to rank these classes in the order that I took them. So first we're gonna start with the classes I took in fall quarter. And the first class is going to be Humbio 2A, which was genetics, evolution, and ecology. And this class is like your typical genetics class. Um, a lot of the topics are probably gonna be similar to what you took in AP Bio. I didn't really take AP Bio in the traditional sense. Humbio 2A is the first class in the Humbio core, which is the series of classes that all Humbio majors have to take. And honestly, it's a pretty basic class. It just goes over like genetics and evolution and that kind of stuff. Uh, pretty similar to what you would cover in your AP Biology class. As for me, I didn't really enjoy the class that much. I guess part of it has to do with the fact that it was the first class that I took in person at college. So I was kind of just adjusting to things still. But even then, the course content, I wasn't really a super big fan of, to be honest. So I'll probably put Humbio 2A in the C tier. All right, the next class I have is Humbio 2B, Culture, Evolution, and Society. So the way the Humbio core at Stanford works is that there are A side and B side classes. The A side is more STEM oriented and the B side kind of leans more in the humanities direction. So Humbio 2B was honestly a pretty silly class. I would say we started off learning about like early hominids. So like Australopithecus and Homo habilis, Homo erectus, those guys. And I feel like we just covered like random topics about like diseases. I remember one of our lectures was just like on Madagascar for some reason. Honestly, I don't really remember the class too well because it was kind of a blur, but it was a pretty silly class, I would say. So I, I guess it will get points for that. So I'd put 2B in the B tier. All right, next we have Chem 31M, Chemical Principles from Molecules to Solids. This is the first class in the chemistry series, which I had to take as a pre-med student. So this is the general chemistry class that a lot of pre-meds take. And I didn't have too much chemistry experience going into it because I took AP Chemistry like two years prior and I forgot all of it. Chem 31M is actually a more accelerated version of the general chemistry class that pre-meds can take. A lot of students take the Chem 31A and Chem 31B classes, which are two separate classes over the course of two quarters. But I took Chem 31M so I could get it all done within one quarter, which in hindsight probably wasn't the best idea because at the time I didn't really know how to do chemistry. I mean, I still don't really know how to do chemistry, but especially back then, I had no idea what I was doing. But it was nice that I was taking a class with some of my friends, which meant that we could suffer together. And honestly, in hindsight, since this class is the first chemistry class in the series, it's also the easiest one, which now that I'm looking back on it, makes me look at it more favorably given that the later chemistry classes I took were just so bad. So with all that considered, if I was just looking at Chem 31M as a class by itself, I might rank it lower, but considering the context of like all the other chemistry classes I would take later down the line, I'll put it at the C tier. All right, next I have Physics 21, which was Mechanics and Fluids. This is also another class that I had to take as part of the pre-med requirements for being a pre-med student. At Stanford, you have to take a year of physics as a pre-med, and there are three different like levels to how difficult the physics series can be. You can take the 20 series, the 40 series, and the 60 series. The 60 series is for like actual physics majors, and you talk about, I don't even know what you talk about in those classes, but I imagine it's really hard. The 40 series is calculus-based physics, so if you took calculus in high school or you took AP Physics C in high school, this is pretty similar to that. And there's also the 20 series, which is essentially the same as the 40 series, but you just don't do calculus, so it's all algebra-based physics, which is really nice because I don't like doing calculus. So if I can get out of that, I will definitely get out of that. So Physics 21, it was just basic like projectile motion and things like that. Honestly, I didn't really like this class too much either. 
I remember going into the midterms completely confused about like what a pulley is. I still don't really understand how pulleys work. I mean, the class could have gone worse, but it also could have done better. But I also have to consider the fact that I took the class online, so it maybe could have been better in person. Nah, who am I kidding? I probably wouldn't have gone if it was in person. I'll put Physics 21 at the C tier. All right, next I have Physics 22, which is Mechanics and Heat Laboratory. As part of the physics series, you have like a laboratory class that complements the actual physics class that you're taking. So Physics 22 is the lab component for Physics 21, and you're kind of just doing the same things in a lab setting. And my lab partner and I never really knew what was going on. We were kind of just trying to finesse our way through the labs every week. But between 21 and 22, I think 22 was probably better just because it was shorter. And my physics labs were also completion based, so I didn't actually have to do things correctly to get the full credit for it, which is really nice. So I think considering that I'll put physics 22 in the B tier. Yeah. All right, last class I have is Athletic 60, which is the club sport experience class. So as you may know, I'm part of the Taekwondo club here at Stanford, but there's also a one unit class that I can enroll in to get credit for going to my Taekwondo classes. And in the fall quarter of my sophomore year, being enrolled in Athletic 60 was actually a requirement to be able to go to competitions, which is why I enrolled in it. So considering that the class was just me going to Taekwondo is pretty good. Athletic 60 also had an hour minimum that I had to meet, which meant that I had to go to a certain number of Taekwondo classes to get credit for the class which I think in hindsight was good because it encouraged me to actually go to classes. And maybe if I hadn't gone to as many classes back then, I wouldn't still be in the club. So yeah, I, I think that Athletic 60 was a good class for me to take at that point in my collegiate career. So I'll put Athletic 60 in the A tier. All right, so this is it for the classes I took in my fall quarter of my sophomore year. I took six classes, which can sound like a lot, especially given that we're on a quarter system, but that's just because I like to torture myself and max out my units every quarter. So with that being said, let's move on to my winter quarter classes. All right, first up, I have Humbio 3A, which was cell and developmental biology. As the name implies, this class was on cell and developmental biology. So I learned about mitosis and meiosis for probably like the fourth or fifth time in my life. But this time it really went into the weeds of things. I learned a lot more about mitosis at that point as is the case with a lot of biology classes, Humbio 3A was mostly just like memorization about the steps of mitosis and whatever else I learned in that class. Honestly, again, I don't really remember it too much because when I took this class, part of it was online because there was like a COVID spike winter quarter of that year. So I didn't really pay attention as much as I should have, I think. But even then, I didn't really like the class that much. I'm gonna put this in the C tier. Okay, next we have Humbio 3B environmental and health policy analysis. This class was the humanities complement to the A side class. And honestly, the two topics didn't really relate to each other at all. Humbio 3A was about like cell biology and 3B was about health policy analysis. I don't know why those classes were paired together, but they were. Humbio 3B, I think was a pretty simple class. A lot of it was just reading policy memos. Part of the class was us coming up with our own policy proposal for, I don't even remember what our policy proposal was for. It was probably something about like vaping, anti-vaping campaign, something like that. That was our health policy proposal. Between 3A and 3B, probably like 3B more, but I don't think I like 3B enough to put it in the B tier. I don't think it was that good of a class. I think if you're someone who's interested in going into health policy, this is like a very crucial class for you to take but given that my concentration in Humbio doesn't really relate to it at all, the class wasn't really as relevant to my particular field of study, so C tier it is. All right, so next I have Humbio 176A, which was medical anthropology. Up to that point, I had never heard the term medical anthropology before, but essentially it was analyzing medical practices through an anthropological lens, which now that I'm saying it, means absolutely nothing to you probably. But this class I think was pretty eye-opening to me in the sense that it helped broaden my perspectives on medicine, which up to that point were like pretty limited to the framework of Western medicine. This class taught a lot about how different cultures approach medicine and view medicine differently, which I thought was pretty interesting. And as someone who is planning on entering a career in like the medical and healthcare space, I think being exposed to those kinds of perspectives was really important for me. And the class was also really easy, which is always really nice. So I'll put 176A in the B tier. 
All right, next I have Power 2 JPB, which was Writing and Rhetoric 2, Curated Reality, How Media Shape What We Know. And this class is one of the general education requirements at Stanford. You have to take two years of basically like a writing seminar. I took the first one in my freshman year, uh, Power 1. So then I took Power 2 in my sophomore year, which was just the second class. This time the class was focused on media portrayals and how the media we consume kind of like form our perceptions about the world. So for this class, my final paper was basically about like portrayals of Korean culture through Korean media, uh, particularly like K-dramas and K-pop and things like that. So I thought that was like a pretty fun paper to write. Would I say that I learned that much from this class? Probably not. I don't think I really improved as a writer as a result of taking this class because the kind of writing you do in this class is just your basic like academic style writing, which was pretty boring, honestly. Another component of the class was doing a presentation on the research that we did for writing our paper. And I didn't really learn all that much from that either because I make YouTube videos. So presentation skills are like whatever for me. I mean, the class was okay. It wasn't a bad class, but I probably wouldn't want to take it again. I'll put it in the B tier. All right, next I have Med 160, which was physician shadowing as part of the Stanford Immersion in Medicine series. One of the really nice things about Stanford is that they have a lot of resources to help support students in like their pre-professional careers. So for pre-med students, there are a lot, a lot of resources available at Stanford. One of which is that they have the SIMS program, which is a dedicated program to pair students with physicians that they can shadow and kind of just learn from them. So I participated in that class that winter quarter. And the physician that I was paired in was in, I think, internal medicine. So I took a bus over to, I think, Los Altos or something to shadow her a couple of times that quarter. I thought it was a really great experience because it was my first time being able to shadow a doctor like that in that kind of setting. And Med160 is also a class that you can repeat. So you can shadow a different kind of physician every quarter. So you can get like a wide breadth of experiences in different like healthcare physician settings, which is really nice. And I definitely learned a lot from that experience. I didn't like that I had to take the bus pretty early in the morning to go over to Los Altos, but all things considered, it was a pretty good time and definitely a really valuable experience in developing my pre-med journey or whatever. So I'd, I'll put it in the A tier. All right, so I think that's it for all the classes that I took winter quarter. So let's finish it off with my spring quarter classes from that year. All right, first we have Humbio 4A, which was the human organism. This class was basically about like the human anatomy. So we learned about like the different body systems. I thought this class was really hard because there was just so much content to memorize. And out of the three A side classes I took that year, I did the worst in 4A. I mean, even then the content in this class is like really important to know. I just was not a super big fan of how it was taught, I guess, because Again, so much content to memorize. Maybe it was just me and like I'm a bad student, but I think there could have been a better way to teach that information. So I'd put it in the detail probably. All right, next was Humbio 4B, which was behavior, health and development. This class was kind of a psychology class, developmental psychology class. It covered a lot of the really well-known experiments on developmental child psychology and things like that. And I thought the class was really interesting because my concentration within my Humbio major kind of looks at developmental stuff. So I thought the, the content was really interesting. And I also really liked how the class leaned more into like the psychology side of things because that wasn't really something that was touched too much upon in the previous Humbio classes I had taken. I think out of all the classes I took in the Humbio core, Humbio 4B was definitely my favorite and the one that I enjoyed the most. So Humbio 4B, I'll put it in the S tier. I, I, I really like that class. It was a good class. All right, next I have Humbio 60, which was human behavioral biology. This class was taught by, uh, I forget his first name, uh, last name Sapolsky. His lectures on the class are actually on YouTube. And a lot of people I know who took that class actually first became interested in attending Stanford because they watched those videos, which just goes to show how cool the class was, I guess. It covered a lot of different topics on how our biology as humans affects our behavior and how our behavior affects our biology from all sorts of different angles. I think Sapolsky was a really great professor and I definitely learned a lot in the class and found all the content really interesting. The P-sets in that class were probably the most difficult out of any Humbio class I'd taken up to that point, but definitely a really worthwhile experience, I think. I would put 160 in the A tier. All right, next I have Chem 33, Structure and Reactivity over Organic Molecules. This was the first of two organic chemistry classes I had to take as part of being a pre-med. Chem 33 had absolutely no idea what was going on in that class. I don't really understand how chemistry works, which is a common theme throughout my 
collegiate journey so far. There isn't really too much for me to say. I, I, I just didn't really vibe with chemistry. I'm, I'm putting it in the D tier. All right, next I have Psych 196A, which is a one unit class that I had to take as part of a fellowship that I was part of for doing neuroscience research on campus that summer. So this class was kind of just learning about how neuroscience research works, learning about like different figures in the field of neuroscience and kind of just getting a sense for how research kind of operates, which was a good class for me to take because I hadn't had any prior research experience. So definitely learned a lot in that class. I'd put it, let's put it in B tier. All right, last I have Psych 196B, which was foundational topics in neuroscience. This was the second class I had to take as part of my fellowship. This class I took during the summer while I was doing my research internship, so it was the summer after my sophomore year, but I'm just gonna count it with my sophomore year classes. This class kind of just gave us a broad overview of different foundational topics in neuroscience. So the things like computational neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience, all those different funky jargon words. I thought the class was fine. I mean, I had taken classes that delved more deeply into those specific fields of neuroscience already up to that point. So I didn't really learn too much in the class. And I also didn't like how the class kind of like messed with my schedule in terms of like, going to my research lab and stuff because I had to leave to go to this class. Yeah, I mean, all things considered, it was like an okay class. I'll put it, uh, I'll put it in the C tier. All right, so this is my tier list for the classes I took in my sophomore year at Stanford University. If you were to take a distribution of these classes, it would probably be like a B or C median, which means that overall my experience with my classes were like at least slightly above average at best. But overall, I think sophomore year was when I really started getting more into my Humbio classes, which meant that it was a lot of more content heavy things related to some things that I was interested in, some things that I was not as interested in, which is kind of different from how my freshman year classes went because back then I was kind of just taking whatever classes, but sophomore year I had to like settle down into things and that's is when I declared my major, so I had to take more STEM classes. So if you go to Stanford and you're thinking about taking any of these classes, please consider this tier list when you're making your decisions. And I'll also be doing a ranking video for my junior year classes pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, this is the end of the video. Goodbye.